Okay, it is Thursday, 29th of April. I'm joined by our head of trading, Piers Curran, and we're going to have a quick chat about Amazon, their earnings, of course, coming out after market today, specifically. But I want to cover kind of two things, a quick overview of what to expect from the earnings report, but more importantly, and what has been helping their share price appreciate throughout the week has been speculation over a potential stocks split, which they've not done in a very long time. And rather than just kind of say those words, I wanted to use this as a bit of an educational piece to really understand what is a stock split? How does it work? How do typically share prices react? And I know Piers is the perfect person to answer that question. So um, no pressure, Piers. Um, to, to set the scene first, let's just talk about the earnings. And I think with any yeah. earnings report, it's good to look at a few specific areas other than the top level kind of numbers. But those numbers, expecting another strong quarter, revenues anticipated to be above 100 billion. You heard me right, 100 billion. <laughs> and profits between three to six billion. Uh, overall, obviously a big pandemic winner with the whole um, lockdowns that have been witnessed globally. Um, some analysts that I've been reading on the street have been talking about this idea for prime customers that it could be very difficult, in fact, to actually break these pandemic habits. And I, I'm, I definitely believe not just from a consumer level, but even a corporate level, I wonder if the pandemic was far shorter, whether or not we truly would see a change in work practices and hybrid working. But because it's been quite a long period of time now, it's almost like it's normal. Um, any take on that about those, those behavioral patterns, do you think? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think that obviously they have been a huge beneficiary of COVID. And the uncertainty is how sustainable is that? And I think inevitably, uh, you know, you're going to see a tapering off of that COVID spike, but it won't taper back to pre-COVID levels. As you say, habits are, are you know, are formed now and, and we're going to change the way we operate in, in a lot of aspects of our lives and certainly the way we work. And so... I think, you know, Apple, uh, sorry, Apple, <laughs> Amazon will uh, continue to be a beneficiary of COVID um, long after COVID's gone away. Okay. And there's a couple of other areas to, to look at here. I'll get on to AWS, Jassy at a moment. But before yep. that, this week we've had, um, last night, Apple, um, we've had Facebook, but particularly Alphabet Facebook. They've had particularly strong uh, advertising revenues on the back of the kind of reopening that's that's underway now. Twitter, who also reports aftermarket tonight, is up about 4% in pre-market, kind of a sympathy play that they're expected to get a boost on that as well. Um, for Amazon, in terms of their financial metrics, this falls under the category of other <laughs> at yeah. the moment. But um, do you see any developments around the ad business of Amazon? Yeah, for sure. And it's something that's, yeah, as you mentioned and suggest, it's a kind of untapped. Well, it's a revenue stream we don't hear much about because they kind of tuck it under that bracket of other and we don't get any detail around it. So it's hard to know how big it is. And more importantly, it's hard to know how quickly that revenue stream is growing for, for Amazon. But like you go onto the Amazon website and it's, it's a bit of a funny one because initially you think, well, hang on, there aren't any ads. But then, of course, it's all ads. Because what you do on that site, you buy products, you buy other people's products. And so I guess it's having, you know, uh, it's building out that, that kind of advertising um, infrastructure where products can be placed at the top of product searches. Uh, and, you know, there's definitely huge growth there for Amazon to build and expand that out. But I think probably for me, it's interesting, you know, one of the big risks for Amazon is that Bezos is, is, stepping away from that day-to-day -day CEO role. He's stepping away in quarter three of 2021, or at least that's the plan. He announced this in February of this year. We don't know the specific date when in quarter three, but um, you know, that's, a big, um, that's the big uncertainty for the future of Amazon, certainly in the near term, right? And I'm, I'm interested to see the guy taking over is the guy who heads up their AWS, their Amazon workspace um, side. And yeah, and if I remember rightly, he was he's been there since the late nineties. I yeah. mean, he's not a newbie, new to That's the radio right. here. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. He's 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 you know cut him in half, and he's Amazon right the way through, and he's been there from the start. And I think that is it. You know, 
choosing him to take over the reins is that a nod towards um, the, the kind of direction of of the business strategy? Let's say over the next decade, and is it kind of going to be that AWS side of things that that becomes an ever bigger juggernaut? And that's been that's had huge growth on that on the AWS side anyway. It's been a hugely successful part of the business. But it'll be interesting. Inevitably, him coming in may well just steer the focus and the focal point of their growth strategy towards the AWS side. Whereas I think Bezos clearly it, it's, 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 it's on that retail side that he's been building that empire. So, so on that CEO transition, I think that's a good time then to also discuss about the potentiality of a stock split, uh, because as you say, it's kind of a meaningful marker, um, this move from Bezos to Jassy. So first off, before we talk about, Amazon, I know you've got some comparisons with Apple and other companies, but what is a stock split? Yeah, so it's the first important thing to understand is it doesn't change it, it in terms of the business and its value. The change is nothing in terms of the business strategy, in terms of what the business does, in terms of the total value of this business. It changes absolutely nothing. It's all it's just a technical change in terms of the shares that are issued and available to buy and, and trade in that company, right? So a share split is just taking the total number of shares that are available now and issuing new shares. So often you'll have, you'll hear about a two to one stock split. Let's start there, because it's the easiest from the maths point of view. If you've got 10 million shares in issuance now, you issue another 10 million, okay? And everyone who, every single person who holds one share then gets another one. Okay, so instead of having one, you've now got two, all right? But the share price is changes and it drops, you divide the old share price by the, the, the multiple, so in this case, two. So the share price halves. So you, the value of your ownership doesn't change like in that instant. You just, let's say the share price is $10 and you've got one of them. Okay, you hold one share and it's worth $10 you then have a two for one stock split. What happens is you just hold two shares, each are worth $5. So you still own $10 worth, but you just got two shares now. So this is a stock split, okay? Um, now, why? Why bother? You know, that's really the, 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 the important question here. And what's quite notable about Amazon is they have not had a stock split for since 1999. And that's unusual when you look at their big rivals and, and Apple being, a really good example, you know, Apple have had five stock splits um, since the year 2000. So they're unusual, Amazon, in not having a stock split. The reason uh, and, and the evidence for that is the, the value of their shares. So their share price is knocking around $3,450 per share. Now, think about it from, a, from an investor's point of view. A small investor, like an individual person, well, to own Amazon shares, that's quite a hard hurdle. Oh, sorry, high hurdle, right? If you want to buy some Amazon shares, it's 3450 bucks per share. When you go and look at Apple, well, you know, you can buy Apple shares. Well, if you enter the market today, you're looking at about $133. And with, I guess, the concentration of the new demographic who are trading, a lot of younger people, they, they, I'd say the concentration is on names they're familiar with. They're definitely familiar with Amazon. They, yeah. I don't think many have can drop three and a half thousand dollars at a drop of a hat. Right, exactly. So really it brings like Apple's Tim Cook because they split their stock again last year and he was asked, well, why are you doing it again? And he said, look, I just want more people owning the stock. He said, I want a more, a larger, di more diverse community having access to own our company and yeah that's that's quite an interesting story i mean it drives up in theory it increases demand at the very bottom level and that's the individual really tiny small investor it doesn't really change much for institutional investment of course because then they're, they're throwing around billions of dollars worth of this stock right so it doesn't really matter for them this is about the lowest tier and it's about building up the bottom of the pyramid, if you like. Um, and so one, one aspect of that is that, you know, it brings in more people who can buy it, but then also it, it improves liquidity is another kind of reason why you might want to go ahead with a stock split. So it just means that 
it probably increases the volume of trading. It increases the number of people, if you like. Let's just say, you know, there's more buyers and sellers for 10 shares at $10 per share than there are for one share at $100 per share, right? So there's more liquidity. This makes the functioning of that, that market uh, more efficient. But I say that, but really for Amazon, Amazon stock is super liquid anyway, even though its share price is really high. So it's not, it's not a particularly valid reason when you're talking about Amazon, I would say. Another good reason for a stock split, it's good PR, you know, Everyone. I was thinking exactly that when you were talking about Apple, and we all know Apple is the king of PR when Absolutely. it comes to that kind of branding, the Apple religion product kind of yeah. proposition. It's good PR, right? But again, is that a valid? I mean, Amazon, I mean, does it need PR? I mean, it, we talk about Amazon all day long anyway. So it's very different. I, I always find it's very different. I mean, with that with Apple products you need to, to buy into that brand that premium the quality yeah i mean amazon is much more transactional almost at this point at least and i know they're looking to diversify one of the things we're looking out for an update in the earnings is amazon pharmacy and these other things and yeah. that will continue i'm sure but i mean even the the look and feel of the website kind of relays that transactional well, it's, feel it's interesting you say that now, now that you say that it's like apple right they're selling high cost premium super slick hardware okay and yet they've got a really low share price or a relatively low share price i should say whereas amazon is exact opposite they're selling really low priced items to the retailer and yet they've got a really high share price i wonder whether subconsciously you know on the board level amazon are like because we're we're down in the gutter selling cheap stuff maybe having a, a high share price kind of gives us that impression of high quality and high value. Whereas Apple is, is almost like they, they don't need to do that. They don't need a high share price because the quality, the tangible quality of their product is so high quality and high value. I wonder whether there's something in it there, but um, I mean, it's interesting that they're doing this now. Well, hang on. Let me rewind. They might not do this now. Let's just be clear. They haven't announced this. This is rumor. And we may well find out tonight when they release their quarter one earnings. And this is what people are looking out for. And one of the reasons why the stock has been up this week running into these earnings is not only because we're expecting amazing figures again, um, but it's actually also because of this, um, because of this stock split um, potential. Um, but it'll be interesting. Look, their shares, they're, they're actually the third highest, they have the third highest share price in America um, in terms of listed shares. Do you know who the numbers one and two are? Well, on, hit me. Well, number one is like out there, a league of its own, Berkshire Hathaway, Buffett's company. If you want to buy one class A share, that'll cost you 410 thousand <laughs> dollars per, per share now that's a barrier to entry right there now buffett has this is his intentional strategy because he says i want like-minded investors to be owning my stock i want investors that are only interested in long-term value propositions long-term profits okay which is obviously his you know his, his ethos so he doesn't want the he doesn't want the the new kind of millennial kind of you know buy a penny stock, pump and dump <laughs> pump and dump right yeah. um the number two company you'll have never heard of well maybe you have i don't know but they're called nvr inc which is a home builder and mortgage company their share price is clock in at five thousand dollars but then it's Amazon, right? So their, their share price is very, very high. And I personally, I think they're long overdue a stock split. Now, the question is, what will the ratio be? Um, some of Apple's stock splits in the past, I said they've done five over the last 20 years. Um, but in, 2000 and, in the year 2000, they did two for one. 2005, again, was two for one. And historically, two for one or three for one are the kind of norms. But then in 2014, Apple did a seven for one stock split. And then again, last year, four for one. Now, because I, I personally think because Apple haven't done it for 20 odd years and their share price is Amazon. so high. Amazon. Yeah, yeah, Apple obsessed, Piers. 
because Amazon haven't done it and their share price is so high, I, I would expect them to go big, like rather than having to do a stock split every couple of years, I would, I, I, I'd, I'd expect maybe even a 10, 10 for one. So yeah, I, I think, I think rumors were five to one that, right, that okay. were going around a few days ago. It might be, yeah, I'd be interested to see if it was 10 for one, which is almost be unprecedented, and certainly amongst big companies, then that would take their share price from $3,450, obviously down to $345. Um, so we'll see. The, the, there's another interesting, maybe final angle for you. Dow Jones Index. Now, this is like, that's the first ever stock index. It's traditionally the kind of, marquee flagship US index. It's the Dow Jones 30, right? But the thing about this index and the way it's priced, it's a price weighted index, okay? Which basically means the value of the index, basically you take all 30 companies, you just add up their share prices, and then you, you, there's a multiplier. So basically at the, at the moment, by how much does the Dow Jones index move? How many points does it move? Well, it moves like for every $1 share movement in any of the underlying 30 stocks. If one stock moves $1, then that, that has a 6.8 point movement in the index, all right? And because it's price weighted like that, which is unusual, Amazon have got a real problem. They'll never be in the Dow Jones index because their share price is too high. If you add up all Dow Jones stocks share prices now, it's about $5,000, give or take, right? But Amazon's share price is three and a half thousand dollars. So if Amazon were to go into the Dow, they would make up 40% of the index, which is why it'll never happen. So I wonder whether Bezos, to kind of round off his legacy, I wonder whether this is a play for him to say, right, I'm stepping back, I want my stock into the Dow index just because perhaps that's something he's always aspired to. And maybe that will be his sign off, um, perhaps. So there's that Dow Jones index angle in there. And I wonder whether that's got anything to do with it. Okay. I'll ask Jeff when I see him next and yeah. uh, we'll see what happens tonight. So um, don't forget as well, we'll have the usual Amplify Live Market Watch podcast go out, Spotify, Apple, all the other platforms on Friday and what we'll do is we'll have a catch up Piers and I and we'll we'll go through have they done this if so how has the market reacted and we'll go into more details so thanks very much Piers cheers Anne. see you later <laughs>